My name is Megan Norris and I'm studying a Bachelor of Psychology at Monash University. I was on the VC Honor of Psychology and today I'm going to be talking about validity and reliability. So to start off, we're going to talk about what is validity and reliability, then we're going to talk about how these two terms are different, and then we'll go through the different types of validity. So to start off, liability refers to the extent in which the results of a study are consistent and stable. If we were to replicate this study, will we get similar findings? Another example of this is do you get a similar number every time you stand on the scale? So if you stand on your bathroom scales and it says you're 60 kilos, you stand on them again and it says you're 45, stand on them again and it says you're 50, we're getting quite different results um, and there is no consistency there. So reliability would be very low. Next we have validity. So this refers to the extent in which the study measures what it intends to measure. If we are studying depression, we need to use measures that study depression and not anxiety. Another example of this is, is the weight the scale says you are accurate? So are you actually 60 kilos or are you really 45 and the scale's lying to you? Something else to keep in mind is a measure cannot be valid if it is not reliable, but a measure can be reliable but not valid. Now this will make more sense when we move on to the next slide. So here I've got a diagram. So this is what results will look like if they're neither reliable nor valid. So you can see that our dots are everywhere. There is no um, consistency to them and they're not centered in one spot. Next, we have results that are reliable but not valid. Now they're reliable because they're clustered in um, one section. We're getting similar results every time we're replicating the study, but they're not valid because they're not hitting that middle of the target. They're not in the bullseye. It's not measuring what it intends to measure. Even though it is getting um, good results in terms of they're very similar, it is not in the middle. So reliable, but not valid. Moving on to the last target, this is what it looks like if it's both reliable and valid. So they're clustered together and they're in the middle of the bullseye. Now here we can have results that are reliable, not, but not valid, as we can see by the middle target, but we cannot have results that are valid, but not reliable, because our results will not be valid if they are scattered all over the target, like non-reliable results are. Now moving on to the last part of this is we're going through types of validity. So we have internal validity. So this refers to the extent in which the results are due to the variable that was tested or measured and not due to some other factor. Um, so in a study about weight loss, was the difference due to the time of day or how much they ate already? We also have external validity. So this refers to the extent in which the results can be generalized to the population. So is the sample representative of the population? So internal means are our variables the reason why we saw a difference in our results and external validity refers to generalizing these results to our population and what conclusions can we get. 